we're just going to speak to uh, people who tried to put on the film, as well as Norman. Uh, how are you doing, Norman? I'm fine, Chris. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <coughs> did it? I haven't did watched it, all, it for a while. Did it all come out okay? Do you think? Yeah, I, I, there are. There is still some technical hiccups with it, which I, I mean, I can't really say exactly um, what the main issues are. I mean, on our, our our version, there were, and it may be down to our uh, network or whatever, but there were some problems. And I, for what people who watch, the main thing is the um, this picture and sound is uh, slightly out of sync. So more pe some people are more sensitive to that than others, so I, I don't know. I'd be interested to hear what people say. Well, I, I've seen a few comments, but it doesn't seem that there were very many saying the problem with the quality. But um, it, it, just so people understand a bit more, what, why is it we aren't putting this on, on YouTube? Well, um, it's basically because uh, the screenings, the live screenings, have been the main way that it, people have got to know about the film. If we just put it out on YouTube, there'd have been no way to publicize it because the mainstream media would certainly not have given us any publicity. In other words, there'd have been nothing to say this film is on YouTube, so they wouldn't have known about it. And the, um, the so-called alternative media, for instance, uh, 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 Navarra Media and the Canary have given the, the film absolutely no publicity. So there would have been a very limited way of telling people that the film was available on YouTube. So we could have put it there and in theory, it would have got a lot more people, but people wouldn't have known about it. So it wouldn't have got out. Mm. So the screenings have been incredibly important from that point of view, but also the screenings have brought people together. People have been brought together to have meetings, to discuss the issues and to see what the way forward is. And I think that's the only way, that is the only way forward is a collective, is a collective way. I mean, Jeremy always said, um, when he was in me big meetings, he would say, it's not me they're afraid of, it's you, I'm pointing to the crowd. And it's the crowd, the collective, that have got to work out what the next step is. And that's why putting on the screenings has been a collective effort. It's been organized by local people, individuals, groups. And I think that's been really important from the point of view of trying to work out what we're going to do next, much more so than just putting it on YouTube and individuals watching it at home. It will go out, eventually we'll put it online and we'll make it freely available to all who want to watch it because i think that's very important but it'll be much more effective then when yeah. people know what it is and well what, i mean you, you, you said before before we were uh, before we played the, the film you said you're working on another film now so uh, i suppose the obvious time to put it on youtube is when the other films um out and then people can sort of watch the, the older well, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yes, it'll be something like that. Yeah. Now, what we're what we're going to do now is talk to people who've tried to put the film on uh, across the country um, uh, from all over. We've got uh, uh, lots of different stories here, um, which are very amusing and, and also quite scary. Um, so it's a, it's an interesting experience people have had. Uh, Arthur West uh, is somebody who has tried to put the film on um, in, the, in Irvine in Scotland. Are, are you there, Arthur? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here, uh, here Chris, when yeah. Hi. Oh, well, thank you, we can see you now as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you tell us what happened to you when, when you tried to put the film on? Yeah, uh, what happened is, uh, I'm from Irvine in, in North Ayrshire, we're, we're 25 miles uh, from Glasgow. So it's actually quite recent. So on, on, on Wednesday, just last week, we had a local uh, we, we community arts centre where we had a screening uh, planned. We had it advertised. We were going to get a good turnout. And I got a phone call at half past four on the day of the screening. And it was from a senior official in the council to say that advice had been given by the legal department in the council to have a precautionary cancellation of the film because it may contain uh, anti-Semitic material. So uh, the officer was delivering this message that there was no way that they were going to move from that position. So we were faced two hours, just over two hours before the screening with having to cancel, you know, having to get information out in social media, having to 
you know, we've just advised people as best we could. It still happened. That it's, 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 it's still 30 people turned up in the night and we were there at the venue to advise them about what had happened. So we're in a position now where a number of the individuals who were coming to watch the film have complained individually to the council. But our group, it was in Ayrshire, we've got a Morning Star Readers and Supporters group, we were putting the, 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 the film on. So we are now in discussion with the council about resolving the issue and getting the, you know, getting the film um, shown. But that, that's what happened to, to us. And we understand because uh, there's an organisation called the Campaign for Anti-Semitism, uh, who I think have been called into question in the past for being politically partisan. They're a charity, but for being politically partisan towards the Israeli government. It was, it, they, they were the ones who I think they were certainly boasting on Twitter that they were the ones that got the film cancelled. So we're in oh, discussion right. with, with the council about showing it uh, in this, this council venue. So that's what happened to us. And it just shows you uh, how there are some elements who are so keen for people not to not to see this film. Someday, one, one of the people who came to the screening said, it's not even a freedom of speech issue. It's a, it's a, freedom, it's a freedom to listen and to watch <laughs> and, you know, pick up... Uh, ideas from a film so that that's yeah. what happened to us and it, 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 when you watched it now did you did you see any any reason why it should have been um no. banned <laughs> a, absolutely no reason whatsoever uh, absolutely no reason whatsoever and it just confirms uh, it just actually makes us it'll make us um uh, there'll probably be a few people from the group maybe linking in today it'll just make us stronger in our arguments uh, to actually get the film screened uh, and we're getting a bit of coverage in the local press uh, about what happened. So uh, at the end of the day, we'll be able to publicise the film, albeit in uh, negative circumstances. Right. Well, look, I'm, I'm going to bring on uh, uh, Chris Jury, who has also experienced uh, a problem with uh, putting the film on um, at Toll Puddle, which you would have thought would be very welcoming of this kind of film. How, how are you doing, Chris? I'm good. Good to see you. And you? Uh, we are can again. You <laughs> yeah. Can you, can you tell us um, what, what you what you thought of, of, of the, cen the censorship again? I mean, it, it, Soul Puddle was rained off as it, as it turned out. Do you think that was divine uh, kind of message? Yeah, definitely. That was our line anyway, that um, the gods had spoken. And the entire festival had to be cancelled because they'd censored our film. Yeah, that was definitely our party line. <laughs> and what I mean, what did what do you want to say about the censorship as, as well? I mean, what, how, have you noticed anything like this before? No, I've never seen anything like this in my uh, many years around and about. And um, I think it's extraordinary, really, um, that the the it, it's still it, the danger is you get into uh, conspiracy theories but what is clear is that the collaboration between in our case the trade union movement or elements within the trade union movement and the labor party uh and then external parties as well who all whether they actually coordinate their actions or not isn't really the point but in effect they all come together to achieve the same ends um there was a uh, the weekend after um we were uh, the, the toll puddle was uh, wiped out there was then a screening in bridport which is just up the road from um from where the toll puddle site is um, and the organisers there adopted our strategy of not saying where the venue was. So, so in order to avoid the problems with these letters arriving, uh, what we did for Toll Puddle was um, we hired a venue, but we were then going to transport people to the venue. And then and we didn't say where the venue was. I mean, we also, uh, we were going to transport them on a coach, but we didn't say that either. 
because um, these various groups could well have trawled the local coach companies and what have you. I mean, it's it's not yeah. beyond them. Yeah. Uh, and then send the threatening letters and blah, blah, blah. So we kept as many of the details as possible uh, out of the public domain so that no one would know who to approach before. Uh, and as I say, we were it was literally a few hours. I was just about to leave to go to uh, set up the venue. Uh, and we got the call that the whole thing had been cancelled. We did consider going ahead anyway. Um, but um, it was clear that the roads would be a nightmare around because we weren't that far from Tollpuddle. And um, everyone would be trying to get out. Yeah. So we we uh, we did consider to go in ahead, which would have been nice because we could then say Toll Puddle was cancelled and the only thing that happened was the screening of this film, which would have been a, a nice rhetorical uh, gesture. But um, uh, we decided in the end that it was pointless. So uh, as I say, this one in Bridport, they well, look, they all... can I just interrupt you a little bit because we've got a. Uh, uh, uh... Lucy Goodison from Bridport oh, right. here. So, so we'll, right. I'll, I'll bring uh, Lucy on. Uh, right, Lucy, Lucy's coming on. Uh, so, are you, are you there, Lucy? Yes, yeah. I am. I've just unmuted. Hang on, you've got to start video. Start my video. Right. Great. Right. Hello. Uh, and Lucy and, and your is that your other half? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, I mean, I don't want to, don't want to get anyone in trouble. Uh, anyway, look, just um, just uh, just uh, can you tell us about how you got this on? Because it is weird. I mean, Chris is saying you have to do everything secretive and and quiet and on the you know it's just ridiculous. But can you tell us what you did? Well, we we were we wanted to show the film, but we were forewarned. Um, because we saw a copy of the letter that this organisation, the CIA, was sending to people, which is actually a load of nonsense. And they are a kind of phony organisation. They actually have links with Israel. It's actually not about anti-Semitism. It's about promoting the interests of Israel. So we saw the letter. We saw there was nothing to it. And in fact, we produced a document which we sent to Platform Films for other people wanting to show it to encourage them not to take any notice, you know, and apparently there's phone calls saying, oh, there's been local companies. It's all fictitious and it's all this particular organization and people get intimidated and they shouldn't. Um, but anyway, we decided we didn't want to risk it. And we followed the um, the idea of the toll paddle radical that Chris Drew has just been saying of following the rave tactic of organizing a meeting place, which was an anonymous public meeting place and not telling anybody where we were showing it, <clears throat> so that no organization could be threatened. We did it all under the radar. It was all done by friendship, cooperative organization, grassroots organization, a fantastic group of people doing it. And uh, we had a really good turnout. People met at this venue. People went to the venue, uh, you know, met outside. And we walked to the venue. We had a good turnout and we showed the film without any problem at all. So I would really encourage other people to do the same and not to be intimidated. Wow. I mean, it, it's such an operation now. I mean, that like the one yesterday we put in uh, in Bristol, uh, near Bristol, outdoors on this inflatable screen, massive inflatable screen, in a farmer's field. He knew that they might be after him, but he was in favour of what we were doing. Um, I was paranoid about, like Chris was saying about um, a coach, I was paranoid about where I get the screen from that they'd, try and stop the hire of the screen. Um, so I had thought of buying the screen, and, and but then I thought I might not be able to get it, know how to put it up. Um, and then I saw there were quite a number of uh, companies that had these inflatable screens. So I thought, I'll just have to go for it. And, um, and that, that worked out, but it's ridiculous that we have to go to the, these lengths. Lynn, uh, uh, sorry, Lucy, I'm, I'm just thinking there's someone else coming on called Lynn. Uh, Lucy, do, do you think there is any basis at all for banning this film? No, none at all, none at all. And it, 
I mean, it just, it's shocking, actually. A lot of the people who, who watched it with us were absolutely shocked to see what had happened behind the scenes at the Labour Party. And the way that anti-Semitism is conflated with anti-Zionism when they're two completely different things. Um, and that was, that was, it was deeply shocking. And it's absolutely not a racist film in any way. Um, it's not anti-Semitic in any way. It's a film with a really good heart and it shows a lot of really good people and good activists who've spent years supporting the Labour Party and supporting the cause of the good of the people of this country who've who've just been chucked out and silenced. And, you know, that should be seen really widely. Yeah. Well, I'm going to bring, as I said, I, I was going to... Um... Carlos, I'll, I'll, I just wanted to say that the film actually, uh, it all depends on just how much uh, the people who, uh, who own the venues have got the bottle to show it, because it was shown in Bournemouth in a pub, uh, who, and he got, the, he got this letter, and he just ignored it, and they went ahead and showed it. Right, yeah. Uh, I it, mean, it, what, it, what happened in um, Ludlow was that one venue cancelled, but then another venue uh, the second venue got the letter and in fact they printed it up and gave the letter to everyone who came mm -hmm. to see the film the next day and they were then able to include that letter in part of the post-screening discussion as it were so you're right it, it does depend on if you can find a venue that are, but a lot of the venues you know they they don't have um you know they don't have skin in this game and so mm. they just don't want to you know mm. get involved and it's such a toxic you know arena that and they don't you know a lot of people just don't understand what's going on yeah yeah they don't want to lose business i mean that idea of that yeah. you know we'll lose your business all your business will be affected and people are worried about Ooh. the economy and stuff yeah. now so why wouldn't that? It's a terrible threat, isn't it? It's a terrible um, threat. You know, no, and being tro trolled online for the next six months and called anti Semites and everything. I mean, it can finish people, it could finish these businesses off. It's yeah. not a, an empty threat. And and look, I'm just going to go on to Lynn, who's been in 14. How are you doing, Lynn? Fine, thank you, Christine. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Now, uh, good to see you again. Uh, I, I recognise you even more. I recognise you now. I rec I rec I, you are very, very uh, helpful. Your mixer was particularly useful last night. Um, I just want to say uh, the the story this week, the big story, it's like every week there's a big, bigger story about the film. Um, but in, in Tunbridge Wells, you've got the headlines this week. Um, do you want to tell us what happened there? I will. Uh, can I give you a little bit of context? Sure, yeah. Um, uh, um, I, I'm the ex CLP secretary for Sunbridge Wells under Corbyn, and during that time we had uh, increase in membership over, it doubled, it over doubled. Oh, and um, also we had an increase in membership Sorry. of our Labour Party uh, councillors representing um, us on Sunbridge Wells for our council. Anyway, um, since Starmer, we've got quite a hard right. Starmerite um, grouping now. One of them is called um, Hugo Pound. He's the father of the infamous Mac Pound. He was on Starmer's office. And he was the one who wore that. Do you remember the photo, the T-shirt? I'm a, a Zionist shiplord. Uh, he, oh, yeah. he wore that T-shirt along with Luke Aker. So I'm just telling you that to give you some kind of um, context, really, into, into what we're up against at the moment. Um, Anyway, um, since since Dharma, a lot of us have been forced out. Some of us have stayed in, uh, and we formed a little group called Socialist Group West Kent, where we decided that we'd carry on doing all the kind of things we were doing when Corbyn was uh, leader. And um, one of those things was to screen the big lie, um, getting on for a couple of weeks ago. Now, we actually had a very different experience from most people. And I think that was because we were particularly lucky that the venue that we found worked really well with us. Uh, we've got a wonderful venue in Tunbridge Wells called The Forum. It's an independent music and arts venue. And um, Steve and I, my partner here, 
we went to see Loki play there a few months back. So they've had a load of, um, well, what they call grumbling about Loki. If people don't know Loki, he was, um, and he still is, a Palestine um, supporter. Uh, he he did, did some work with Jeremy and, you know. Anyway, so we knew that uh, the forum was likely to be um, uh, positive about the film, and they turned back to Astonbury, so they agreed to do it. And in fact, what we did was put all the information out there as much as we could, and the venue uh, publicised it to all of the people on their mailing list, and uh, we sold out. We sold out, um, every single ticket went, and it was great. What we also did was to make it a charity fundraiser, and um, that was a really, really thing to work really, really well. And in the end, we raised, after the venue cost, we raised £200 and we gave it to the venue link charity, which was West Kent Mind. Um, so that everyone was just like really made up about that. Now, what's happened? So far, so good. Not, not particularly interesting, you would say. Uh, but what I think it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Carry on. <laughs> well, one of our members, um, Councillor Ray Green, is a Labour Party councillor on Tumbleton Borough Council, and he and um, one of our long-standing <laughs> social group West Kent members, um, Dr Malcolm Spiegel, who's a Jewish member, he's been in Jewish Voice for Labour for years, um, they offered to sponsor the event if, by any chance, we didn't raise enough funds to cover the cost. And when our um, when our song right uh, Labour Party in Tumbridge Wells heard about it, the group leader threatened to withdraw the whip from Councillor Ray Moon. Uh, Ray Moon said he will go and watch this film. It was his, he sponsored it as a private citizen. And anyway, he was just like any of us, you should be able to watch a film. The film is not illegal, the lawyers have seen it, and the lawyers have said nothing here. So he came to see the film with us. Anyway, the next bit, I think you'd probably guess what happened. Uh, Councillor Ray Moon had the whip withdrawn and um, is now sitting on Tumbridge Wells Borough Council as an independent member and is under uh, investigation, disciplinary action uh, by the Stormer Rights uh, for what seems to be very spurious kind of reasons. Um, Apparently, we're not allowed to attack the leader of the Labour Party, which I think is um, it's, uh, given what we've, we've seen in the film, um, just seems a bit peculiar. Anyway, um, we've received quite a lot of um, publicity about it in Kent, and it's made our local newspapers as well as Kent Online, and the Morning Star picked it up as well. And um, one of the headlines in uh, one of our local papers was, a uh, politician has whip withdrawn for watching a political film, which you can sort of see the, uh, the irony and almost comedy factor in it really. Um, but for Ray, he's, um, he's sitting as a Labour Party, sorry, no longer a Labour Party councillor. He's still a member, so it's a bit like Jeremy Corbyn, what happened with him. And um, he's actually receiving a lot of support from people outside of the Labour Party, as well as a lot of support from people inside the Labour Party, including people in some as well. Um, I've got a statement from Ray. He can't be here today because he's at a big family event. And um, shall I read it out now? Or? Yeah, yeah, please, yeah. yeah. So this, this is Ray's words. Um, after being a Labour Party member for 40 years, I've fought the Tories, and during all of that time, fighting, I fought for social principles and policies. Being able to discuss and indeed having different views in the party, outside and in, has been the foundations of the Labour Party, which I joined. Standing up for democracy and freedom of speech and being a lifelong trade unionist in the CWU is what I have fought for. My suspension of the Labour Party whip has been a stressful time for me and continues to be so. I hope the Labour Party leadership stands back and stops these damaging actions, actions that can only damage the future of the Labour Party. And um, Ray wanted me to finish off with um, a little quote, which is, 
Just because you go to watch The Godfather doesn't mean you are a supporter of the Mafia. It's freedom of choice. And I think that sums it all up rather beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's really, I mean, that's really interesting. Um, and and it's great that he's he's stood up uh, for free speech, but it shows how terrifying it is. I mean, I, I don't know if people are worried about being on this on this Zoom even, to, to thinking they might be seen by someone if they're a Labour member. Uh, Lucy, you've got your finger up. Um, just to draw your attention to some of the uh, chat questions, there's quite a few people um, saying they would like to see a copy of the letter that people get sent, so they're forewarned and forearmed, and possibly the document explaining about that that would be really helpful. Now, those people, we can't see them, but they're asking and they're on the chat. Yeah. And all I would just suggest that um, there's Norman there and people that are in the film are in touch with Norman. Norman has all of that. So people can just ask him to send them. Norman, do you want to speak on that? Are you muted? Yeah, no, yeah, uh, no, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if people have got my email address, just email norm, N, which is short for Norman, N-O-R-M, six three four four that's six three four four at gmail.com norm six three four four at gmail.com and i will send you the letter the standard letter that the campaign against anti-semitism send out and the rebuttal of it by naomi uh, wimborn idrissi of jewish voice for labor she takes the whole letter apart and shows mm. what a pack of nonsense uh, and very malicious nonsense it is and also gives the background to the campaign against anti-semitism so please just email me and i'll send it right now i'm going to bring on there's more people here it's all over the country we've got kent uh we've got toll puddle we've got bridport we've had uh irvine irving in scotland uh and now i'm going to can i bring in... before you bring someone in can i just make one little quick point uh, oh i've brought them in but gone oh Carry sorry on. Anyway, the little quick point in, in the chat, there's some reference and criticism uh, of the fact that um, <clears throat> I was sort of uh, reveling in the fact that the Toll Puddle Festival was called off and how it's not an expression of solidarity and, and all of that. And the solidarity question Anonymous. is one that... one The solidarity question is one that I've... Uh, uh, thought about and addressed and the idea that by protesting the censorship of the film I am the one breaking the solidarity of Tollpuddle is frankly Kafkaesque mm. if the solidarity that they're talking about involves did the uh, people uh, in the TUC in the top ranks of the TUC deciding what films I can and can't watch, then in what sense is this solidarity? Well, I mean, it's perhaps solidarity in a Stalinist sense, mm. um, but it's crazy to even, you know, to throw that at people. We didn't take the action. Right. I mean, it sounds like it... it it's a divide. It's a way they've also this. They divide people with this sort of thing, don't they? I mean, they get people fighting each other. It's this. It's what they want as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now I'm going to bring in Leslie Phillips uh, in Nottinghamshire. So we're going up to the Midlands now. It's all over the country. This film's being banned. They're not leaving any stone unturned here. Uh, you should be unmuted now, Leslie. Uh, you can't unmute. Uh, I can't hear you. I think you need to un unmute. Uh, oh, you've gone. I oh, know you're not. <laughs> you're back. Right. Uh, um, there you are. I think I'm you're not... there. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> OK, um, yeah, well, we actually plan to have a screening to coincide with Toll Puddle after it was cancelled. So we thought, oh, that'll be a good idea. We'll have it on the Sunday. 
Um, um, as soon as we, we had it with book tickets through Eventbrite, but just free tickets. But as soon as uh, Norman put it out on Platform Films Facebook page, we just we, we were swamped with um, well just vicious bookings really, including um, I think ten tickets were booked by somebody calling themselves Got the Trots, which uh, I'm sure other people would be familiar with that name. <laughs> anyway, we managed to um, eliminate those that we thought were malicious. But unfortunately, the week before we were due to screen, I received an email from the venue to say um, that they'd been advised that it may con contain sensitive and controversial material that may upset members of the community. Um, Obviously, I replied and said, but by cancelling this, you're upsetting members of the community. And um, could you tell me exactly who has made the complaint? But they won't, wouldn't they wouldn't divulge who made this complaint. I did send that send them a lengthy reply, but um, no, they they were totally intransigent and um, we weren't allowed to use that venue. Luckily, we were able to um, find a an alternative venue the following week, um, but it only held half the number. So we did manage to show it to 31 people, which was certainly better than nothing. And those who were unsuccessful in getting tickets for that, we were uh, advised to join this online screening. Um, I'd like to say that the film brilliantly um, <laughs> portrays what we actually experienced here in Bassett Law, because as you probably know, Bassett Law was John Mann's constituency. Oh God. Yes, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, we campaigned for the 2019 election and we actually witnessed, we experienced the forces working against us that actually resulted in this, this, us having this current Tory government. So if anybody says to us that we're letting uh, the Tories in at any further elections, if we don't vote for Keir Starmer, I'm afraid they've got themselves to blame. But mm. um, yeah, we, we had horrendous experiences with John Mann, but I won't go into too much detail. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that. John Mann must, uh, oh, I, I, the <laughs> idea that you'd be in the same town. Is in it's quite scary. Really the oh, same uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. The way he talked to Ken Livingston was just appalling, wasn't it? Well, um, yeah. Shocking. As you saw in the in the film as well. Um, I'm going to bring on. Uh, we're going up to the northwest now. We're being in the middle. No, that's the northwest. Uh, Matt Matt Panesh in um, Morecambe uh, has been putting on a festival uh, at Morecambe Fringe, and um, are you there? Are you yeah, there, Matt? sorry. Yeah, I've just pressed. Yeah. Oh, there we are. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Now, could you, you? You've been um, you've been under pressure to to cancel the film as well, but you but you've not um, buckled under on this one. No, not at all. I was lucky enough that to, that I've got the venue, but because um, I run a fringe festival, uh, and I sit on the board of the Edinburgh Fringe, and we've obviously had. Um, issues in the past with freedom of speech and the right to self-expression. And so that was my line on this, uh, which was if the film uh, was prejudiced in any way or, or um, gave rise to hate speech, then we have got a legal system that will take care of that, you know? Uh, and the film was released in February, March. <clears throat> so I'm sure if it was, then that would have happened. Uh, so it would be illegal. So in the case of the Fringe Festival, it's, um, you have the right to say whatever you want on stage within the confines of the law. And if you disagree strongly uh, with whatever's going, then, then you have the perfect right to peacefully protest against it as well. So there's that sort of double edge. So um, right. that was the line I took, and I, and I was quite lucky. I say lucky. Uh, talk about nefarious forces. <laughs> um, I was lucky that that was accepted. 
uh, I think. But then I was supposed to get a £3,000 grant and now the council have just said I was maybe promoting a political belief. So I was going to have to go to a meeting to see whether I get that grant or not, which should have been paid last week. So I don't know. Oh, um, my God. Yeah, I know. I know. So, so there's that side of things. I, I think it'll be all right. Uh, and I'm not going to say it's nefarious stuff. I'm just going to say I think it'll be all right. But yeah, uh, that's the line that we took. And I've got to say about the film, picking up on what Norman said, uh, I had people coming from Winsford, which is the other side of the Northwest to me. You know, it's it, it's uh, they, it's well, it's like an hour and a half in a car, two hours, basically, because I was the closest to them that was showing the film and those people now actually want to take the film from Norman and, and show it there we had some people from Kendall uh, come down which again is about an hour away in the car um, and and they tried to get the film shown and it was pulled they couldn't find anywhere to host the film so this this thing is really scarily for me is it's actually real this is 1930s germany without without wanting to say that but that's exactly the sense that i'm getting uh that this is uh, really ridiculous i can't believe how much we've retreated in in such a short time really 15 years uh to be like this i'll stop talking by the way chris that's right. Uh, look, that, I appreciate your, your. I mean, that sounds scary. That you, you you put it on and then you get a punishment for a, a sort of maybe losing funding. I mean, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but I mean, it's good what you're doing, and, and uh, I know you're busy as well. I've, I've been told you've got a busy day today. Uh, I'm pleased you could come on uh, at all. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to bring on um, Colin. Uh, we've got Colin Morris in Portsmouth. Uh, so we've got South Coast, and we've got we've had Kent, so we're getting we're south again now. Um, are, are you there, Colin? Have you got me? Yeah, I've got you. So you 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 were you were one of the first to be blocked by Unite, is that right? <clears throat> we were um, first. We had to pay tribute really to our. Unite uh, colleagues in Southampton who successfully showed the film in the Unite office in Southampton to a packed audience. When we in uh, Portsmouth uh, found about this, we, we thought, oh, but jealous as buggery, let's get in touch with Norman and get a copy of this. And we, we booked the conference room at the Unite office in Portsmouth and uh, our actual Unite organiser um, set up the Eventbrite page. Uh, unfortunately, we wanted to do that ourselves because we, we wanted to know who the people were who um, uh, were booking. But uh, she set that up. And then we had a branch meeting um, just before the, the showing where she read out uh, an email from Sarah Carpenter, the Southern Region General Secretary, who said that um, we could not use um, Unite Premises to show this film because there were concerns about it. And that was it. She didn't know any more. Uh, our branch secretary wrote to Sarah Carpenter to find out what, what's going on. Uh, and, and again, these concerns were uh, posted on our WhatsApp group and um, all, the, all the branches along the South Coast all were uh, aghast because lots of those weren't wanted to show the film as well. Uh, we've had about four different excuses so far. Um, and we're told that uh, Unite money can't go towards political things. Uh, we can't use the uh, Unite premises for political things, which is totally ridiculous. I mean, what the hell else is a, is a trade union for? So uh, we had to look outside. We had uh, two church premises uh, who, once we posted it on Eventbrite, um, suddenly withdrew. So we, we have now had a, a very successful showing in central Portsmouth. And we use exactly that uh, tactic that was mentioned that we, we posted the event but we said um, venue to be advised. So we didn't tell them where it was going to be. Wow. Uh, and we just told people to 
uh, meet at a certain place. Um, wearing masks. Wearing masks, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so we took them into the venue. We, we haven't even now, we haven't publicised where this venue was. We might want to use it again. Uh, and uh, that, or we did have some problems with the actual uh, projector, unfortunately. The uh, overhead projector uh, kept cutting in and out. And the backup projector uh, didn't use uh, the large speakers. It only used its own speaker. So uh, it could have been better, but it was it was successfully shown and we had a discussion afterwards as well. Right. Well, look, thank you. for. Look, I'm going to bring, I've got another um, Unite story here because this is a, also a new development in the last few weeks, especially in the last, I think, two two weeks in, in Bristol, we've had uh, an attempt in the Unite office. Brisbane, Headley, could, I, could I just make a point about the, there are quite a few people you probably aren't able to look because you're chairing. There are quite a few people on the chat who are making good points and they're feeling anxious because they can't see the chat of other people. I'm sure there's a good reason why it's set up like that. But there are people saying, I can't see other people's chat. I'm yeah, not well, responsible. I, I, we could I, just I mean, include, I, them, include them just to let them know that the chat is there. It is being. Yeah, I know. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm, this is a new format with the webinars. Not uh, there's two types of chat. There's a Q and A and there's a chat. I think I can see people in the chat. So I, I'm, I'm just and and we're sort of going over time. So I mean, I'm I'll probably have a, that we will we will do a follow up on this a, a, anyway. So. Not, uh, uh, this isn't uh, this isn't universal, Chris, but I can see everybody on the chat. Yeah. Yes, the panelists um, can see it, but the other people who aren't okay. on the panel. Right, can, can, we, can we just get back to um Headley? How are you doing, Headley? Okay, thanks. Um, can you tell can you tell us what, what happened in Bristol? Uh well, yeah, I think people know we had a similar experience to uh what the guy just said from Portsmouth that we shown the film in Tony Bent House. That's Tony Ben House in Bristol, yeah. um, uh, to a full house, and there was no problem, no no complaints, no criticisms. And then we tried to show it again, uh, and it was pulled at the last minutes. Uh, but I, I wanted to make one one point about uh, that event. It was mainly featuring Asa Win Stanley promoting his uh, book. If people haven't seen this, weaponizing anti-Semitism, it's a great book about the issues raised in the film. Uh, and the book was launched, uh, we were going to do alongside the film, was pulled as well. Uh, and the reason given was that it, it had uh, allegedly caused hurt in the in the Jewish among Jews in the UK. I mean, I pointed out to Gail Cartmel, who said that, that it wasn't really right to talk about an ethnic group or a religious group. It, it, in that way, as if all Jews in the UK are the same. Uh, but I've not a, re a reply to that. Uh, we are going to go ahead and reschedule that. And I, I'd suggest, strongly suggest that people uh, on this call uh, ask where Asa to come, if he's not already been, to their locality to promote the book. He does a presentation. Yeah. Uh, but the other point I wanted to make, and briefly, is that Arthur said earlier that uh, the... Uh, local council in, in where he lives in Scotland had been interfering and somebody else made this point as well. Well, when we first showed the film in Bristol and we've shown it twice now, uh, we went to the council on Norman's advice and, and got a certificate because the British Board of Film Censors hadn't done that uh, for the whole country. So we went to the local council. Uh, it took a while. Uh, I think in other places where that's been done, it's been given a 12 certificate because the word bastards is in it or something like that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Bristol gave it a 15, <laughs> which I'm still kind of wondering about. Uh, but it would be one way of uh, putting to bed the role of the local councils and interfering in, in, in the showing of this film uh, if people across the country are applied for, to their local council for a certificate, because that would put a stop to any attempts by local councils to say that this film shouldn't be shown. They can't, on the one hand, give it a license, which they would have to do, because everybody else has done it, who's been asked. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it would have a certificate to be shown. 
th th there is a censorship process in this country and people should use it right that's a good point thank thank you Eddie. um norman's put his hand up uh yeah the, the, uh, very grateful for headley's uh intervention um the one thing I would say, and uh, getting a certificate is is possible, and you can get it from your local council. You go get it from the licensing department. I would caution against being too um, secure in the idea that that will get the screening, because we have had cases of other councils. One in Pontypridd is an example, and uh, we haven't got the person from Pontypridd here. But the local the local council simply said you can't use our building for screening this film because we don't allow screenings of films in our buildings, even though they had in the past allowed screening. They allowed a Ken Loach film to be seen there, but they said, oh no, it's not a thing that we do. So, and you've got community centers also that have um, come under uh, various kind of pressures to do it. So unfortunately, if they, I mean, having a certificate probably helps, but if they want to, if a council really wants to put the boot in and it's their building, I'm afraid they will, they will do it. Um, the, the, the certificate the uh, is mostly for you know to make sure you're not showing pornography uh, is basically what the, uh, the certificate is mainly about um, but yeah that's all I'd say the other thing I the quick thing I'd like to say is um, if people want to know where to go next and what's going to happen next both with this film but also with the issues that are going on in the Labour Party I would strongly advise that the best thing is to tune into Crispin Flintoff this this show that's on at ten thirty every Sunday. Personally, it's what I've found is the best way to keep in touch with what's going on. Other forms of media don't tell you. These cancellations and these screenings is not covered in the Canary or in uh, Navarra media or in quite, quite a lot of other places. But you can find out about it on this show, not the Andrew Marr show. Uh, so do do keep and come back to this every Sunday if you possibly can, because I think that's the Thank best you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for that plug. Thanks for that plug. Uh... Norman, I just I just want to say yeah, th this show is on every Sunday at half past ten. If you haven't been on this before, um, and we do tend to have people from the grassroots come on. We don't just have really important so-called important people talking, although we do have so-called important people too. Um, not that I am. Uh, Jill and Dave from Wimbledon are on the call. I think this might be the last one we take because. I'm ex over it, um, extending my welcome in in someone else's house for this web uh, for this Wi-Fi as I've just been doing screening in Bristol last night, slept in a tent, and this is the kind of thing we've got to do: sleep in tents and um, stay in other people's houses. It's how we do it now. Uh, now but Jill and Dave in Wimbledon uh, are the record breakers. I, bit, I thought I'd leave on a good note because they are the record breakers. They have put on the most screenings. Um, the, the other people on this on the Zoom that we can see in the window, they're all trying to get up to Jill's level, um, but <laughs> Jill's got the, the trophy at the moment. How many have you got, Jill? Well, we've just done our fourth one this week. Right, there you go, four. Um, right, okay. And um, I, actually, yeah, my heart was sinking when I was hearing how many problems other people were having. But let me just tell you, the first time I showed it, I was a little bit worried because we've had our own personal problems in Wimbledon over... Um, the advent of Jeremy Corbyn and we have our own personal um, right wing or Zionist kind of Labour Party people um, who have made some trouble for me and I thought when I applied to take the film that they would see me they would help me out of town. It was hosted by Tunnel 267 which is um, a private club leased from William Morris House so William Morris House is not owned by the Labour Party. They just have dispensation to have the meetings there. But I thought very quickly that, you know, the, you know, the wrath of gods would come down on me for actually having the cheek to host it there. But the first meeting went by and no problem in the second and the third. And I began to feel, you know, a little bit blasé about the whole thing. And then when I was sort of pushed into doing a fourth one, because I was getting a bit tired, running around and doing all the organizing um, but you know sort of on a high but also thinking oh god you know let somebody else do it now all of a sudden the club got the CAA letter and Stan phoned me in a flap and he said we've been threatened and we've worried about bad publicity 
So I said, well, hang on a sec, let's see what we can do. And I went straight to Norman and to the um, chair of the trustees. And I'm a trustee in William Morris House too. And the really good news is that Norman sent me the, uh, the letter uh, that they, the club had received and the rebuttal by Naomi and um, that was great. I spoke to the chair of the, the trustees and he said, look, we'll be behind you. We'll be absolutely behind you. We've spoken to the club owners. They love what you're doing. They want you to show it again. They don't care about that letter. You go for it. And that, um, John, John Colbert is a GMB steward. He's big in personality and he's big physically. And he said, I'm only little, I'm four foot 10. He said, Jill, I'll take any trouble on the chin. On the night, you go ahead and do it. So I felt buoyed up and we had a really good evening. Now, I'd also started to give over leadership to a new recruit who came from the last time I came on your program, Nick, who found that he lived actually around the corner from me and he was delighted. And Nick took over the event right. He opened the accounts, he ran the meeting and he decided to charge. We've been doing it for free and shaking a bucket, which makes it more exciting about whether we cover our costs or not, but he decided to charge. The interesting thing was that we got a lower number of people registering but they all turned up on the night. And when we were doing it for free, we would get a full house at 80 seats, but only 60 people turned up each of the three times. When I looked at the list, having had that threat from the CAA, um, when I looked at the list, I didn't really know any of the names. So I started to feel a little bit okay about it. But the first people I spoke to when I came into the meeting, when the people were coming in the door, were people from Mitchum, where a lot of the troublemakers are. And so I began to think maybe our audience was packed, but actually it was packed with people who want a Labour Party that works in their interest. And the indignation on that fourth showing was palpable. Hardly anybody went home at the end of the showing. They stayed and like they did with you, Crispin, they wanted to talk and talk and talk. We were able to talk a lot about Akisa. Uh, we had a lot of people wanting to do more things. And I think one of the things that we've not really managed terribly well is capturing the energy that comes from having viewed the film. And if, and that is a big if, I show it again, I would definitely be looking to keep a mailing list that I am allowed to use instead of breaching GDPR and start capturing people's energy and trying to focus it in a more constructive way. Well, I also uh... I photocopied and laminated and handed round to that copy. It went about halfway around the room. Uh, people wanted to see it and then they thought, you know what? Nah, not really interested. They were more interested in where we're going with the labor movement. And I think the steam has just gone out of the CAA. Right. Uh, that's all I can say. Well, look, we, we, we've run, we, we, I'm sort of run out of time, but um, I just I just wanted to say um, that I'll, I'll just leave it with Norman, I think, because Norman's the, the conductor of all this. That's what I say. That's that thing in the in the film. Who's conducting the orchestra? Well, it's Norman. Uh, to, uh, thank you so much, Norman, for all you've done. And, and thank you for coming on. What would you like to say to finish well, this? Well, just that, um, I mean... The people that we've seen talking here have been all great, but there are loads more. And I, I apologize for the people that I didn't manage to invite because there are like the uh, woman in Radlow who were on the screening and got combined and put another one on. There are lots and lots more examples, which in a way is great, but in which way is the, what's really frightening about it is the efforts that people have gone to and have, 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 are up against the forces that they're up against. But yeah, I would just, and we, I will try to um, answer all the people who want the letter and the rebuttal and um yeah but it, and if you if you've just sent the request to chat or something do email me on norm6344 gmail.com and also i'd like to apologize to christine tongue my other half because she was hoping to be on as well so well, i'll get into yeah well I, I i i was going to bring her on but i think we just i can't really carry on much longer so what i just want to say thank you to everyone this is the biggest uh turnout on a zoom uh, on a Sunday morning that I've I've seen and um, every week we're on half past ten. Uh, come back if you enjoyed uh, the the film and and uh, people that that speak about it because they're always on this call. And if you think that um, you feel hopeless with what's happening, there's a lot of people who feel the same, and we're stronger together, even if it's just on a Zoom.
And if you want to come out and sleep in a tent sometime uh, in a field when it's raining and look like me in the morning, uh, you're welcome. And we'll try and do it again. Norman wants to say something else. What yeah, yeah, just quickly before I... Uh, I uh, the, the main person behind Platform Films is and always has been Chris Reeves, who uh, is the cameraman and the editor and does everything. I'm just the, uh, the front man to this organization. Chris Reeves has been making these films since the 1970s. So please do remember that. I'm just, you know, on the, on right. the, on the front of it all. He's the guy who does all the hard work. Thanks. And I want to thank, I want to thank the host, the, uh, the, the, the man who's helping me to host this from his house. I won't name him because he might not want to get um, whatever, do you know what I mean? Anyway. Um, I hope you all have a good uh, rest of the day and weekend and um, speak to you. See you soon. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.